Hello tankers and tankettes, and welcome to one of my only plays. Now this is of course a relatively rare sight these days, but I do still play World of Tanks a couple of times a week, just not anything like at the level I used to. This is T69, and it's a very recent acquisition indeed. It was one I spotted that was on sale, I've had it on lock for a while, and so although in theory I'm saving up credits for one of either the, one of two tier 10s, that either the T110E4 or the E50M, and it probably is going to be the E50M that I, uh, that I want to get first. Uh, it just seems like maybe it might be a bit more fun generally than the E4. But because this was on uh, a discount, I thought, why not? I've got this unlocked and I can buy it right now. So I did. It's still semi-stock at the moment. It's the T71 gun. I've got the second engine from something else. I didn't actually unlock it on this. It was... Um, I realised... I realised it's from the tier 6 American Arty from a very, very long time ago, back when I was first playing artillery, and we're talking three plus years ago, and it was around about the stage, like I got to tier 6 with the American Artillery, and I think I actually elited the American tier 6 artillery, the M44, and then I, it was around then, I was thinking to myself, wait, this, this, is, this, this isn't right, there's something a bit broken with artillery. It's not really, uh, it's not really fair in any way, shape, or form. And then, of course, later on, I may have gone and ground out to tier 10 on the British artillery line, but that's completely different, right? Anyway, the the middle engine, it turns out, had come from the M44, so that's how I had that available. I think I'll, I also have a, an engine, uh, not an engine, I just said engine, a radio available from something else as well. So it's stock gun, middle engine, so it's not quite as slow as it is stock, and uh, upgraded radio and uh, that's it now the um, I'm gonna need the tracks before I can get the top gun but even with the stock gun it's not completely terrible except if you see tier 10s it kind of is because the heat penetration is only 210 average and the APCR which is your standard is 175 that is grossly inadequate against some tier 10s the same tiers, uh, for even a lot of tier 9s, you know, there are some of the more armoured ones where you'll struggle, but generally it's workable, it's not exactly high pen for a tier 8 medium, but uh, it, it's the, the fact that it's heat penetration, uh, heat, uh, heat with not fantastic penetration as your premium ammo uh, means that, yeah, against some tier 10s you are just going to badly struggle, and that actually will be the case in this game, there's going to be a couple of times when I meet tier 10s and I just can't do anything. But fortunately, this is going to be one of those games where even though it's not good matchmaking, there is at least one competent top tier tank on the team. Anyway, so I was uh, keeping that RU proxy spotted in the hopes that someone would shoot him from behind, and our Centurion Action 10 did, which is good. That's their scout out of the way. And as we can see from the minimap, well, um, this is this is when I was played in a platoon. Obviously, uh, that this is uh, Klingensberg. He's actually one of my Patreon supporters. Uh, it was during one of my Patreon uh, player sessions that I actually had this game, obviously. And uh, yeah, he's in the Mutz. He's in the uh, the southwest corner. And as you can see, there's a single enemy IS-7 there. So rather than rush there and try and ineffectively do something against an IS-7, and I think I'd literally have to drive up round to the rear armour of an IS-7. I don't even think I could paint the size of the IS-7 with this thing. Uh, I decided to come over to this flank instead, because we've got an STP-1 here, an Object 140, and of course the Action 10. So we know there's a Jaegeru that's been spotted over here, there are a couple of tanks on the A-line. And I'm just going to see if I can get any sneaky spots or see anything that I can pen, because I've got optics on this. I've got optics, vents, and a vertical stabilizer. So I do actually have max view range, or well, just about, I think it's 440. However, the Action X, uh, the Action 10, doesn't have a fire extinguisher. Gets hit by the Jaegeru, gets set on fire, and uh, that's that. The Batchat 25 AP is able to kill him, but I get a couple of shots in as well. Now, my shooting wasn't 100% on point in this. I do flub a couple of shells. I think generally it wasn't bad, but I just don't play the game nearly as much as I used to. I think I can objectively say I am less good as a player than I used to be, just because I don't put in the hours these days. 
And of course that makes a difference. Now I've still got all that that knowledge and all those hours I've put in previously, but uh, if you're not regularly practicing then that does make a difference. So I've almost, almost been able to kill the TVP and then he, yeah, goes, like he makes a get, uh, make a getaway and I could potentially have killed him there and instead I didn't and he's going to live for quite a while longer. Instead I stopped to aim at the arse of the T28 prototype which is not known for having it, any armour and instead it goes in the tracks. Hmm. So then the AP turns up, he probably, well he should realise I've got the stock gun just given the amount of damage I was doing. I am more relying on my teammates to maybe try and shoot this guy. Uh, Klingensberg has actually relocated to where he can give some fire support and that's going to be very very useful. He actually gets a shot in but it's a low roll, he should really have had the kill and instead it's going to go to uh, the enemy Jaegeru. The enemy Jaegeru just team kills. <laughs> the 25 AP. God knows, absolutely God knows how he managed to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm just dancing around the rock. Uh, I really did not want to get in front of that Jaegeru gun. I know that's a very nasty gun. And I'm thinking, okay, it's a Jaegeru, it's got decent armor, but surely I can pair the sides and rear. No. No. However, Klingensberg does get the kill, so uh, that's going to be quite nice for him. A tier 10 kill is going to be worth a little bit in his uh, tier 8 premium. So reloading again, and this is... I mean, the, the reload is short enough that if you've got, say, three shells in the clip and you know you're not going to be immediately engaging somebody, then you might as well just reload, because it is actually pretty quick. And that's one of the advantages of the American autoloaders, is that... Uh, you don't have the overall accuracy of the French, although the French, you know, to get that best accuracy, you have to stop and aim and aim and aim. And that's basically true on, I think, all of them except the 50B, I think. I haven't actually checked the, the batch out stats. But uh, yeah, with the Americans, you, you do not get that overall accuracy, but generally you can get the shots out quicker. And that can make a big difference. And of course, you're not necessarily, unless you're at very close range, you're not necessarily going to be terribly accurate with all those shots. So this is looking very close. Uh, we just lost a Conway there, and that's their backcheck making a run for it. Now, I definitely can pen him. Uh, we're down to not a lot of tanks. We've got an IS-5 that's up near their cat, and I've just taken my first damage, but that's fine. I got the bat chat, so that was a decent trade. And even if I hadn't, I think the, the 140 probably would have killed him. Um, but yeah, we're running a bit low on tanks and they still have an E100, uh, they still have a Gorilla 15, an ISU, and that low health TVP, we know he's a one shot, and there he is. Now, I probably could have just gone for him, uh, the, the moment when he appeared I was already kind of just slightly falling back, so yeah, I should have just gone for him at this stage, but I was being overly cautious. In retrospect I can say yes, it would have been safe, but I didn't know at that point sure that it would have been safe and instead oh well he gets to live for a bit longer now, I don't know what quite happened with the replay there there is some kind of bug with uh, uh, 915.2 where it goes completely haywire in sniper view sometimes unfortunately this replay is mostly fine but I think that was a little example of it so the ISU decides to come forward doesn't want to get hit in the rear by the 140 in another tank, I maybe could have tried to track him, but I think it would take multiple shots from this gun to try and track an ISU frontally. If you can't get an axle tracking shot, if you're actually shooting into the tracks to try and shoot, uh, to, to try and uh, stop somebody then. But the T-71 gun, yeah, that's not a single shell. That is multiple shells at best. So, I have managed to punish him a little bit, but... Uh, Popping out to try and finish him off, you know, coming uh, coming in front of his uh, gun would be probably not a good idea. So instead, I'm going to load up some of my heat shells, which are not really that much better. It's you know, well, I mentioned 210 average versus 175 average, so it's uh, going to be tricky trying to pen that E100, and it pretty much is for the E100. I don't need them for the grill, and I don't need them for the ISU, obviously. I was thinking at this stage, by the way, of uh, going more round to where the 140 is, and then I decided actually no, because Klingensberg is going to the flank. He is trying to uh, open up an angle 
and uh, get some fire in from the side. And if I run away to where the object 140 is, that rather leaves Klingensberg kind of out off there on his own. And uh, if nothing else, also from this position, I can spot for artillery. Because our artillery is still alive. So that's what I'm going to do for, for now. I've, I've tried one shot at the E100, but I'm, I, I know I'm not going to pen him. Like, if I had side and rear armor, maybe. But I'm not going to get to pen him from the front. It's just not possible. I think even the top bar, if I could hit it at this range, it would be a bit of a dicey shot. There's no way I can even get his lower front plate. Then, surprise, surprise, the ISU comes up behind me and completely messes up his shot. Now, I could have survived it and I would have been able to clip him even so. But fortunately, yeah, he, I, I don't know, he kind of panicked and shot. I mean, he didn't look like he had a clear shot on me. He just fired into the ground. So I don't know what that was about. But uh, anyway, that's one less thing to worry about. So just trying to pick up that E100 again. And he's actually now taking cover behind a rock from artillery. And who can blame him? However, Klingensberg still has shots. And he's actually taking this opportunity to uh, fire into the guy's side armor. I can see the Gorilla 15 is moving. Uh, maybe I can get a shot? No, okay. It was actually below the, the, the ground level there for me the entire time. So, no, there was no chance of uh, getting that guy. But that does, however, mean that I am free to move up and go on the other side of this rock. And I can proxy spot the E100. Now, and there's no way artillery can get him, but with the 140 on one side and Klingensberg on the other. I mean, if nothing else, I can maybe try and distract this guy a little bit. So, try a heat shell. I kind of, I don't know, he turned his turret towards me and I thought, well, oh, top bar, top bar, let's let's have a little go at that. But uh, trying to snapshot me into the top bar is not going to work. So, yeah, the only things that I've been able to successfully pen with the heat in this, uh, let's see if we can get this last guy, in this game have been targets where I absolutely did not need it. So, yeah, I did not make a profit on this one. Not at all. Now, because I killed a Bat Chat and the Gorilla 15 at the end there, that was a Levish Lyho's medal for me. And that really is the most kind of interesting thing about this replay, uh, at least from the results point of view. I mean, I just beat out Klingensberg on score uh, by a couple of XP. But you can also look at this and say, well, the Tiger P and the Object 140 and a couple of the other tanks did all right as well. You know, there was a couple of the higher tier tanks that really uh, pulled their weight. And that's the thing with being bottom tier. If your top tiers are terrible, you can't do anything. Doesn't matter how good of, of, of a player you are. Your chances of actually affecting the outcome of the match are severely diminished. In this case, we had some... Uh, top tier players that were competent and that made all the difference we were actually able to affect the outcome of the match somewhat or at least help affect the outcome of the match so the t69 so far um i'm sort of enjoying it it's it's all right it's different than anything else i've played so far i don't really have uh, any autoloaders outside of the, uh, the the french heavy tanks and there's a, been a couple of other tanks that I've played that, like, there are um, the old autoloader on the line, like the Chi Re, for example. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as lines of autoloaders go, um, I mean, the, the American autoloader line is a bit of a mixed bag, generally. It goes from lights to mediums to heavies. So, ultimately, I would like to get the T57 Heavy, which has obviously been in the game for a while uh, uh, at this point. But... Uh, uh, the journey there, I don't know how it's going to be because there's still the T-54 E1 to go through as well, eventually. So, there you are. Uh, a bit of um, uh, recent tanks action from myself and not a completely terrible game, but uh, not spectacular. It's just this is the most interesting game I've had in this, in the, the first battles I've had in it, so... Hopefully, hopefully you think so too, and you don't think it was uh, uh, a complete waste of... I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but... So. <laughs> anyway, yes, hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, if you did, you can leave any comments below. You can hit the like button, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.